Hi there. Welcome to this Google Product Manager interview. My name is Akshat, and I used to be a former product manager at Google, where I worked on Android Messages and Google Stadia. Today, I'm playing the role of interviewer, and my candidate is Anika. Hi all, I'm Anika. I also used to be a product manager at Google, where I worked on search as well as YouTube ads. I've conducted dozens of product manager mock interviews, and I'm excited for a video today. In this mock interview, we want to show you what absolutely acing your interview looks like. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The question today is, how long do you estimate people spend stopped at stoplights each year? Okay, got it. So let me start by asking some clarifying questions. First, does this question apply to anywhere in the world or is there a specific region that we're focusing on? Because um, I imagine that both road conditions and how stoplights work might look different from one place to another. Good question. For this question, let's just focus on the United States. Okay, got it. Um, I'd also like to get a little bit more clarity on what we mean by the average person in this question. I think there's a number of different ways to interpret this. When we think about kind of people at stoplights, we could think of drivers, we could think of anyone in a vehicle, for example, riders who aren't driving. Um, we could also think about bikers, pedestrians. Um, so do you mind clarifying who exactly we're talking about? To keep it simple, let's say just drivers. So people behind the steering wheel of vehicles. Okay, got it, that makes sense. And then finally, are we thinking about the world pre or post COVID? Um, just because I think the amount of time that people spend driving has drastically changed um, between kind of pre March, 2020 till now. Let's, for the sake of this question, imagine a world pre COVID. Okay, great. So just to clarify, um, we're thinking about finding the total amount of time that drivers in America spend waiting at stoplights every year. So I'm going to think about my answer in terms of a unit of time. So hours or minutes. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, great. Um, so just to kind of walk you through how I'm thinking about the question, I want to first figure out what the high level equation would be here. And then once I have that structure, I'll kind of dive into each of the individual um, parts of that equation and walk through how I would estimate a value for, for each of those parts. Cool. Okay, great. So I'm um, just going to take a couple seconds to think here. If I want to end up with the total amount of time for all drivers, I think the simplest way to do this would be to multiply the total number of drivers in the US by the amount of time that each of those drivers spends at a stoplight. Here, Anika does a really good job of coming up with the high level equation and presenting that to the interviewer. This creates a structure for the rest of the interview that's easy for me to follow. Um, I, wanna, I definitely wanna note that not all drivers are gonna look the same here. Um, there's a number of different segments that will all vary based on their specific driving habits and that will then affect how long they spend at stoplights. So let me dive into what those different groups are and how their time at stoplights will differ based on that. Makes sense. Awesome. So let me start with um, thinking about what, how I want to kind of think about these different driving segments. Um, so first, we definitely have a group of commuters, which are people who drive daily to and from work. So let's have that be group one, commuters. Group two is going to be um, what I will call transport drivers. So these are people who drive for their job. So um, you know, we're thinking of freight drivers, we're thinking about delivery drivers, taxi drivers, um, anyone whose day-to-day um, -day job is mainly driving. And then finally, 
I think we also have leisure drivers who will drive occasionally when they need to. So this might be errands, driving from place to place on the weekend or, you know, short trips on a need basis. Um, And also just note here that this last category of leisure drivers is um, not kind of mutually exclusive from the first two. So what I mean by that is there might be some commuters who are also leisure drivers or some transport drivers who are also leisure drivers. Anika does a really good job here of segmenting her audience. This shows that she can think as a PM and consider the end user's individual journey and recognizes that each different kind of customer segment has different driving habits. So for each of these groups, um, I'm going to kind of walk through how to figure out how long the group spends at a stoplight. So to keep it simple, I will think about for each group, I'm going to think about three things. So the first is the amount of time per day that group spends driving. Um, Second, how many days per year that group spends driving. And then finally, what percent of the time they spend per day is at a stoplight. So maybe I'll actually switch the order around. I'll say amount of time per day driving, percent of time per day at a stoplight, and then number of days per year. So let me go through that process for each group. I'll start with commuters. So again, this is people who mainly drive to and from work. So for commuters, I think each day they um, will likely spend around two hours a day on average driving. Let's kind of working backwards. Um, Each trip, I would say people drive anywhere from 15, 20 minutes if they live very close to their work, all the way to one hour, one and a half hours at the extreme end. Maybe some people drive two hours each way to and from work. Um, So if we kind of take an average of an hour per way, um, we have commuters driving on average two hours a day. Um, And I think they would likely be commuting at peak traffic times. So in terms of percent of that time spent at a stoplight, it would be higher than average. Um, Based on my own anecdotal experience, when I drive to work, I probably spend roughly 10 minutes out of my roughly hour long drive each way at stoplights. And so about 15% of my time um, is at stoplights. So that's kind of the estimate I'll say here is two hours a day, 15% of that time at stoplights. Um, And then in terms of number of days a year, um, there's five work days for most people per week, um, 52 weeks in a year. And so roughly 260 work days a year, and I'm going to just round that to 200 to keep my calculation simple. Um, I just want to acknowledge making a lot of broad stroke estimates here, but um, I think for a first pass, I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. So the calculation here would be two hours a day, 200 days a year times 20% of that time at stoplights. So we have commuters spending 80 hours per year at stoplights on average. So now I'm gonna move to my second category, which is transport drivers. Um, This is people who drive for their job. I would say these people probably spend most of their workday driving. So again, estimating an eight hour workday, we'll say eight hours. Um, Because they spend a longer portion of the day driving, the fraction of that time that's spent in peak traffic is going to be less than Um, than the commuters we talked about earlier. So instead of 15% of time, I'm going to say 10% of time is spent um, at stoplights. Again, just to keep it simple, it might be a little less than that. It might be a little more than that, depending on how much time they spend on highways versus uh, streets with more stoplights. But I'm going to, for now, estimate 10%, a little lower than full peak traffic. Um, When I think about number of days per year, This is going to be more than your commuters, just because I think many transport drivers likely work on weekends. Um, 
people who do deliveries and freight drivers often have weekend drives. And when you think about public transport drivers, typically public transport runs on the weekends and is an essential service in most areas. So we can expect less non-work days out of the year for this segment. Um, so again, for estimation purposes, I'm going to say 300 out of 365 days per year, just to kind of keep the numbers easy. So for transport drivers, we have them driving eight hours a day, 300 days a year, and 10% of that time is spent in traffic. So that's 240 hours a year spent in traffic for this user segment. So then finally, our third user group is leisure drivers. These are folks who kind of drive occasionally whenever they need to for weekend trips, for errands. Um, and so I would say again here, there's going to be some variation in the amount of time per day they spend driving. But let's just assume, um, you know, if you're driving for errands, maybe you're driving anywhere from like one to three hours to kind of get everything done. Um, and if you're maybe going on a weekend trip, you're driving, again, could be close to home, 30 minutes, it could be far, you're going somewhere for the weekend, up to three hours. So let's estimate uh, maybe two, two and a half hours a day and two days per week, um, Saturday and Sunday. So we'll say that for these drivers, um, they are also spending less time in peak traffic just because you can kind of optimize for when you want to drive on the weekends. And typically um, there's less kind of concentrated times of peak traffic. So we'll take that lower estimate of 10% for this user group as well. Um, so if we want to make that average calculation, it's going to be two and a half hours roughly per day. Um, if we have two days a week, that's, you know, 52 weeks, so roughly 100 days a year, um, and then 10% of that time in peak traffic. So for this group, it's about 25 hours per year, um, which when I think about this, you know, in a vacuum, that, that does seem slightly low to me. So if we have time at the end, I'll come back and, and think about this a little bit more. But for now, let's go with that 25 hours a year estimate. Anika does a good job of justifying her estimates with anecdotal evidence and explains her thinking clearly. Um, so I'm going to pause here now that I have these estimates. Um, does all this sound good to you so far? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense so far. How would you take these estimates and now kind of come up with, a, with an aggregate estimate for total time? Yes. So now, now that I've gotten these estimates, I want to first revisit my high level equation. Um, so taking a step back, what I wanted to do was take the total number of drivers and multiply that by the amount of time each of those drivers actually spends on the road. Um, so now I've walked through, or sorry, not on the road, at a stoplight. Um, so now that I've walked through how I would calculate the amount of time these drivers spend at stoplights, I want to now answer that first question of, how many drivers fit into each of these user groups that I've outlined. Um, so going through that process, we have, again, these three groups. We have commuters, transport drivers, and leisure drivers. So for the purpose of this estimate, I'm going to try and use my knowledge of, you know, number of Americans total and, and how they fit into different age and demographics to estimate um, the size of each of these groups. So let's start with commuters. We know that there's roughly um, 150 million working adults in the U.S. And this is um, an estimate I had remembered from actually a few years ago. So it works well for this question because we're thinking about pre-COVID. Um, and so let's assume that commuters make up um, maybe, I would say, 80% of working adults. Um, if you'd like, I can kind of unpack that estimation a bit more, but I'm assuming that not all working adults have to commute to work um, and fit in this category. So 80% is kind of, again, a broad strokes estimate here. Um, and so let's say that 120 million adults total fall under this commuter umbrella. 
So then moving on to the second group of transport drivers, um, these drivers also make up a portion of that 150 million. Um, let's say that, um, you know, to keep it easy, let's say that 10 million out of that 150 is uh, transport drivers. So a little more than 5%, which seems reasonable to me. Um, finally, let's go to leisure drivers. Again, this is a non-exclusive group. So some people that fit in the first two groups are also going to be leisure drivers. So I'm going to think about this group a little bit differently. Um, I think the simplest way to calculate this would just be to include any, any individual that is likely to be able to drive in the U.S. and maybe then take a slightly discounted version of that population. Um, so in general, I think... People, anyone above the age of 16 can drive. Um, of course, there's also going to be some people who choose not to drive and then some folks on the other end of the age spectrum who might not be driving. So if there's about 300 million people in the U.S. pre-COVID, let's just say that uh, 200 million of those people are, are leisure drivers. So now that we have the number of people that fit into each of these groups, I'm going to just return to my high-level equation and just go through that calculation to wrap all of this together. Um, so for each of these three groups, what I want to do is just multiply the estimate for number of hours spent at a stoplight in my first question. Um, by the number of people in the group um, that I walk through in the second part. Here, Anika does a good job of taking a pause and summarizing her progress so far. This helps me as the interviewer follow her line of thinking and prepares her for the rest of the answer. So for commuters, we just said that there's roughly 120 million adults that each drive 80 hours per year. And so that's about um, 9,600 million hours. So these are all in, in millions right now, units wise. Um, for transport drivers, we had 10 million adults in that category drive, or, um, I, I think I keep saying driving. What I mean to say is waiting at stoplights. So 10 million adults waiting at stoplights for 240 hours. And so that is two, uh, 2,400 million hours. And then for uh, leisure drivers, we have about 200 million adults who spend 25 hours a year at stoplights. And um, that total is going to be 5,000 million hours. Um, so if we think about adding those three, the 9,600, the 2,400, and the 5,000 million hours, we get a kind of grand total of about 17 billion hours spent at stoplights. So in questions like these, the final number isn't what's most important. What matters more is the candidate's ability to explain clearly how they got to that answer and the process by which they arrive at the final number. Cool, that makes sense. If you had to refine this analysis, um, what would you double click into? There's actually a number of things I, I would like to have spent more time on in this question, but um, I'll maybe kind of walk through a few that I think I would want to definitely take a second pass and, and work through in, more, in a more nuanced way. Um, the first is I think I've kind of broadly defined these three different driver groups. Um, I would certainly want to spend more time understanding who the different drivers in these groups are and how I could kind of further subdivide them. Um, just because, as I mentioned briefly earlier, there's a lot of variation, for example, within leisure drivers and within commuters. There are the people who spend 10 to 30 minutes, and then there are also the people who spend, you know, two to three hours. And that is that could likely make a pretty material difference to the end solution. Um, and especially for a category like transport drivers, um, I think the different subcategories have entirely different journeys in some cases where a freight driver, for example, 
is likely driving for much longer distances, spending much longer on highways, and therefore uh, usually less time at stoplights versus maybe an Uber driver in a metropolitan area is spending a lot of time, like in New York City, for example, could spend a much higher percentage of that transport time at stoplights with less highways and, and more general city traffic. So I think First and foremost, I want to kind of take a deeper look at these three categories and what the different subcategories would be. Um, I would also want to better understand um, the differences in stoplights. I think one thing I kind of glossed over was I assumed that stoplights are kind of one broad category, which might be the case on average. But um, in general, I think there are some stoplights that might be quicker, some that might be um, might be red for longer at different intersections. And so that's something that um, I'd want to certainly look into more. So I think those are those are two things that I'd certainly want to spend more time on. Anika does a great job here of reflecting on her analysis and seeing where it might have been lacking. Cool. Okay, Anika, that's the end of the interview. Um, well done. You did a really good job. And thanks for being with us today. Thanks. This was really fun. Overall, Anika did a great job in this interview. She structured her responses clearly and explained her thinking. She also did a great job of managing her time and explaining where she would go into more detail if the interview was longer. I hope this interview has been useful to you. Both Anika and I are coaches on I Got an Offer. So if you have an interview coming up, you can find us there. Thanks and good luck.